So before we start our second workout, I wanted to clarify something. Is that um, we are going to play from C to C. So this is your left side of the Cora. This is your right side of the Cora. You are here. So we start from C here and we are playing with our thumb. So C, E and G. So as you can see on the chart, it's E, G, C, these three notes here, we are using our thumb. Whereas for B here, we will use our index. Now for the other, th other side, D, F, A, C, this is the, these are the four notes we're going to play. Use your index. So why am I saying this? Why can't you use uh, your indexes everywhere or your thumb everywhere? And the reason is because if you want to play the Cora, mainly one thing that you like, I guess, for a lot of people it's the case, it's that combination of accompaniment and solos and melodies. So playing everything together, which is the really nice part about the Cora. This is the reason I fell in love. One of the reasons I fell in love with the Cora is that ability to play everything at the same time. At the same time. And once you stick to that rule of having your thumb always playing the same notes, not a note further, not a note uh, lower, your brain has a clear image of where your thumb, your thumbs should play, and where your index indexes should play. So that is the reason I ask you for this exercise to stick to that rule. And this is the reason in the other exercise where we only used our thumbs. So. That being said, it doesn't mean that I cannot use my indexes, for example, to play a note here, the C here. It just means that while you are in a learning process or doing like a kind of exercise like I'm um, giving here, having a clear rule is of the utmost importance because this is where you build your foundation once it is settled, it is solid, you can go around it. But don't burn the steps and do whatever you want all the time because you won't have a solid, solid foundation. So in the, in the learning part, in the exercise part, in the like, very scholar part, stick to the, to the rule. Once you have it, once you master it, you can go around it, no problem. But to, I, I would suggest that you separate the two processes. Of course, you, you could do um, like free impro and do whatever you want, play with your index, indexes from the top to the bottom. That's, that's very okay. It's just like in the learning process, in the fo when, while you are uh, building your foundations, use the, that rule and that in the future will help you have a clear image of your Cora, which is of the utmost um, importance. It would be like saying, um, when you learn to swim, uh, don't do like chaotic movements because it won't help you learn to swim. But once you can swim, of course, you can do any chaotic movement you like once you know how to swim. So that's just the point here that I'm trying to, um, to give you. So. That being said, I hope uh, you'll have fun in that second workout. Let's start our exercise. So we're going to do C, D, E, C, D, F, C, D, G, C, D, A, C, D, B, C, D, C, C, D, C, C, D, B, C D A C D G C D F C D E C D C So as you have seen I have you I've been using my thumb here on my right side for C E and G 
So now we're going to start using a rhythm and we are using, I am using a little app called Jalra, J-A-L-R-A, -A. it's a free app you can find on, um, on your app store and it's, it's doing Indian rhythms. So it's just to spice it up a little bit instead of using a simple metronome, so let's start. So the bell you can hear in the background is one. So one, two, three. One, two, three. So let's go. One, two, three. Okay, so as I said for the last one, slow exercise is really nice and efficient uh, to improve your, your playing. Now I've doubled up the speed, so it will be 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, now we're gonna double up the speed again, so it will be 200. So I'm gonna count for you. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So one important thing when you go fast is that in your mind you're not running, you're not rushing after, the, you're not running after the time, you're inside the time. If it's too fast, as I said earlier, just go a little bit uh, slower. But what I mean by sitting in the time is that before starting you should get yourself used to the rhythm, for example by counting or maybe tapping the foot for, or maybe imagining that you play so that you are putting yourself into the rhythm. Uh, another detail, maybe you will notice that I play with these two fingers. Okay, it's very unusual, I know, but I've been um, uh, playing like that for 12 years now. I've been doing maybe five years of playing only with these fingers when I started and then I decided to use uh, other fingers. Some master of chorus told me that you cannot do that. Others. Uh, told me that, that it's okay to evolve, um, it's up to you. Uh, I suggest, especially if you're in a beginner, to sp stay with the traditional way. So that's my own way, you don't have to copy that. Um, you can play normal way with only the index. Actually using other fingers, it's a, it's a whole another step of learning actually. So um, that's just a detail if you notice that. So that was your uh, workout number two. I hope you enjoy and let's meet for workout number three.